you know, sometimes, or actually, actually not sometimes, actually very often here in the studio making music, I fail. I fail a lot, and and failing, failing is good. Failing is part of making music, and I would love to share some of these fails where I think they're like absolute no goes. Things you should try and avoid by all costs when making music, because they will just ruin your career or ruin your songs entirely. I today, for example, tried one idea and and it just failed. But let me explain. So what are the things you, you shouldn't do? And yes, I know some people will comment, it's music, you should break the rules, and that's the only way to be creative. And yes, every kind of rule you can break, but these are like rules and, and suggestions that in most cases, if you break them, you just fail in a way. Let's get started with the very first one, the one that basically ruined my entire day. I don't know if you remember, like two, three days ago, I was like on a short trip and they had like a piano. And as you can hear, that piano is screwed. It's detuned, like I've never heard a piano that detuned. And I was thinking like, it's interesting. I played it and I was like, it's interesting. That could be something unique. I should make a song with it. It's kind of fancy field recording it, like just like with a small mic that I had with me. And my idea was to have it in a song and mix it with a normal piano that isn't detuned. And by mixing it, controlling the, the amount of detunedness, and kind of um, start with it like sounding really bad and then like switching to the more normal sounding one and have this piano transfer into something. It just didn't work. It just sounded, didn't sound good. It was just confusing. Even me as a music producer, couldn't see anything good. So I, I scrapped the idea pretty fast. That sometimes happens. And I, I would like the, the rule out of it would be don't do fancy stuff just for the sake of being fancy. So for example, don't parallel compress multi-band sidechain EQ stereo mid side. That stuff, if it's not necessary, don't use it. Those are very specific fancy things you should only apply when necessary. And usually when they're necessary, you're already screwed up. These are tools for mastering where you get an entire song and you can't change a whole lot about it. Then you might have to use it. But as a producer, as a person making music, mixing music, you still can go to the individual parts and fix it there. So leave the fancy stuff for, for the sake of just being fancy or because you heard someone else using it. Just use it when necessary. Speaking of fancy, one thing that I personally always find very interesting is when I see people making music live. There are a lot of people doing electronic music live, which I like, it's like the next natural big step. But there is a lot of music that when I, when I cover the YouTube video, if I don't look at it and just listen to the music, it sounds like crap. It's stuff that only works in context. And I think music should work without it. There are a lot of people doing like uh, loop station kind of live performances, which are great. But sometimes when you just listen to them, it doesn't sound good. If you achieve to make it look good and sound good, then you're gold. But don't just make music for like the performance part of it. It should also work on its own. The next one is a little more technical and that is too much bass. Too much bass will ruin every single song. It's the number one beginner mistake you should avoid 100%. Too much kick, too much bass, too much low end. It will muddy up your entire mix, take away the space. You're usually better off keeping it lower on kick and bass. I know we all love kick and bass and we want to have the maximum amount of bass, but most people overdo it. Listen to other tracks you like and listen for how much kick and bass they actually use, and you'll always notice they use less than you do. Another technical point is people trying to fix things instead of just replacing them. I get a lot of questions like, how, how do I make this kick work? How do I, what do I have to do with the kick or the bass or whatever kind of element? And it's usually not what you have to do with it. It's more 
trying to find a replacement for it. If a kick doesn't work, you can EQ, compress, and whatever, it won't help a lot. Just trying to find another sample helps, is easier, faster, and also reusing the samples that you know that work is definitely a, a good tip. Another one I hear a lot, because I get a lot of demos for my label, is people in a way overproducing songs. One point of them is definitely having like too many elements in a song playing at once. It's just impossible to mix it. So make sure there's not too much going on at the same time. And then every section of a song have like a main element. If you have a vocal, it's usually the vocal. If you do instrumental music, it's usually the main element. Maybe two main elements doing like call and response, but usually try avoiding having tons of stuff play at the same time just doesn't sound good. Another example for overproducing is having too many ideas in one song. And I'm guilty of that <laughs> myself a lot. Like I start producing a song and have like one main melody and then I play around, come up with another main melody and I like both of them. So I can't decide, so I put both of them in the song and that's usually really bad. Like a song should be like a book. Like a book doesn't start out as a fantasy book and ends up as, I don't know, a, a crime scene, modern kind of thing, it would be so confusing. So like pick one thing and make it shine and make it all about that. Same applies to mixing too many different styles. If you make a crossover of one with another style, that's usually fine. It usually leads to something new, maybe. But if you like put three, four, five styles in one song, it's usually more confusing than, than enjoyable. Another big one, I'm guilty of it myself, I think every one of us, and that is getting lost in, in gear and plugins. I love gear and I love playing around with it, but I try not to get lost. Like I deleted 80% of my plugins a couple of months ago. It was just too distracting. I don't need 20 EQs, I just need one EQ that works and I know how to use it. Same for synthesizers. I narrowed it down to the hardware units I have in here. Yes, I actually had twice as many. I just cut it to be more focused, focused on the music and not the tools that you need to make the music. And speaking of gear, there is a, another big one, especially beginners, um, like coming up with excuses. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the right speakers. Like all of that are just excuses. Excuses to cover up your laziness, your lack of focus. I, myself, I started with zero, absolutely nothing. Like, didn't get any money by my parents. I worked really hard to afford like the first, like very cheap speakers. And I just worked my way up. It's possible. It's hard. It's really hard because a lot of people do it and a lot of people are very dedicated and just get started. Don't come up with excuses. I can't make this song because I don't have the right speakers. Then like go somewhere, like ask your parents for money, work maybe a month somewhere, save some money up, sell something you don't use, get the necessary budget friendly equipment. It's very doable nowadays. This stuff is very inexpensive and all of the knowledge you need to make music is available for free online on YouTube. So just go do it. And eventually you, you'll start making money with your music and you can buy fancier stuff. But it's not, it's not the stuff that makes your music. It's, it's at the end you, your knowledge, your experience. I know a lot of people that just have like a, a MacBook and headphones and make amazing music. There are two more points. One of them is being like social. This entire music industry Everyone knows everyone. If you're being an ass, no one wants to work with you. If you go to a session and behave not accordingly and let other people be part of it or you're just a dick, like it, it will it will hunt you down. It will hurt you in the long run. So be nice. Just be nice to everyone. Pay people. Be in time. Just be like a, a, a good, decent kind of person people want to work with. Also help other people if you can. If someone asks you for a contact, help them. They'll return the favor 100%. If you block these people, they'll still find a way to get in touch with that person or do whatever they wanted to do without you. And you're then the asshole that didn't help them. So if you can, if it's within your power and reasonable time-wise, help other people. And probably the most important, the last point is finish your songs. I'm guilty of it. 
three years of my life, I just made music. I never finished any kind of song. I was always like, no, it's not good enough. No, I don't want to release it. And then when I started releasing, I regretted it. Because like the first song you release, even if you feel it's good enough, it will still be a fail. Because you have no experience in releasing songs. You don't know how to promote them, how to handle a label. You then all of a sudden need a lawyer to check the contract. And then the label screws you because you have no experience and you don't know what to look for and how to deal with these kind of people. So start releasing as soon as possible and finish the songs as, as good as you can and then just get them out there. There is nothing you'll lose from releasing a song. You can delete them anytime if you self-release them if you're ashamed of them. And I personally think it's kind of nice to go back to an artist and see how they develop. I like seeing that. You can go back to my early songs and listen to them and be like, yeah, that's maybe not perfect, not good. And then eventually listen to the new stuff that is uh, of higher quality. And also only if you release songs, you can start building up a fan base, which I think is like the core essence nowadays of being a musician. Without the fan base, no gigs. Without the fan base, you can't sell stuff. You can't make money. No one is supporting you on social media. I think it's like the, the core thing you should focus on, building up people around you that support you and like your music. Anyways, I think that's it. If you have any other points you want to add, just, just comment down below. And tomorrow, back here in the studio, music making, without that shitty sample entirely detuned piano.